Hello everyone. Welcome to our lecture video 2, uh, Lecture on International Business and Trade. Again, I'm your course specialist, Rafi Mark N. Cabanyo. Let's get started. The first here uh, is the case study on Kenya, an African lion. This is also, this can also be found in our reference book. You know. They just uh, tell the background of Kenya, wherein they were colonized by Britain, and eventually they had their uh, independence or independent. They become independent from Britain. Independence, independence from 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 Britain. Anyway, um, so what happened? Sa parang nagkaroon ng shift yung Kenya sa kanilang political situation, you know, wherein they really grew in their economy during that time. But before that, hirap talaga sila, no? So, the landscape that has paved the way to Kenya's growth was the liberation from the colonizer and their shift towards a new form of governing. So, that's the gist of uh, how Kenya became the African lion uh, way back in after the property bubble in 2008-2009. They still stood still no? during those crises, economic crises. Previously, in our video, we had, we had discussed globalization. You know, and now we are trying to check one of the many countries and how does this relate to our study on globalization doing international business and trade. What's the relationship? Why do we need to have Kenya as, the, as an example of a country? We can also use Philippines if you, if you wish. But we just to give justice to our reference book, we'll use Kenya no? and what paved the way to the changes that happen and us studying international business and trade, how can we relate the study of a country, specific country, in doing international business and trade? So, I call this session the importance of knowing countries. Ito yung mga flag ng mga countries. No? International business is much more complicated than domestic business because countries differ in many ways. They differ in many ways. No? Okay, kasi kung dito lang yan sa Pilipinas, madali lang. Eh. Hindi masyadong complicated. But why did it become complicated? No? Later, we will find out. Find out. Here, because countries have different political, economic, and legal system. Kanya kanya yan eh. They vary significantly in their level of economic development and future growth trajectory. And cultural practices can vary dramatically as can the education and skill levels of the population. All these differences can do have major implications for the practice of international business because why because what what might be applicable into this specific country is not applicable into this specific country case in point uh, I, I i have a colleague in the office a consultant from singapore but she she is a chinese national so according to her Facebook is banned in China. So they used to have WeChat and WhatsApp. No? Yun yung mga means of communication nila. I don't know now. The, I think I, 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 I got that from her five years ago, four years ago or so. They have a profound impact on the benefits, cost, and risk associated with doing business in different countries. The way in which operations in different countries should be managed and the strategy international firms should pursue in different countries. Thus, it's important to know 
the countries in which a firm does its business and trade. Parang paniligaw lang. You need to know the family, the background and all. Or if you join a community, you need to understand how they do things. May kasabihan nga, di ba? When in Rome, though, do as the Romans. Similarly, we can apply the same adage here in our study on international business and trade. Let's discuss uh, these three things, no? Which we will call political economy. So in this study, we shall use the term political e economy to mean the interdependency, the intertwining of the following. One, political, economic, and legal systems. So yan, yan na yung ano yun. So, they are all related, interdependent, intertwined. You cannot take out one from each other. So, we, we call that political economy no, in this study. So, in the political system, unahin natin yung political system. The political system of a country shapes its economic and legal systems. True enough, because they are the ones who are mandating, like what happened in Kenya, no, when they changed their political system. So that shapes also their economy, their, their economy and their legal system. They need to establish new rules. Thus, we need to understand the nature of different political systems before discussing economic and legal systems. There are two dimensions of political system. Number one, the first degree, collectivism. Second, democratic or totalitarian. So, in an overview, hindi natin siya talagang aaral. Inaral namin to sa philosophy in college. Mahabang discussions to. But in a gist, just for us to have a glimpse on what are these dimensions of political systems. So collectivism, this refers to a political system that stresses the primacy of collective goals over individual goals. Ibig sabihin, yung common good of everyone. Okay? So regardless kung may common good or may, may good ka as an individual person, hindi yan yung unahin. Yung collective muna. No? Yung, yung common muna sa lahat. Common good. So that's the overview of what collectivism political system is. In the democratic, it means, kayo, familiar tayo dito in the Philippines, right? It refers to a political system in which government is by the people exercised either directly or through elected representatives. I will not discuss further about it because we are living in a democratic country. Total, totalitarian, what does this mean? It is a form of government in which one person or political party exercises abs absolute control over all spheres of human life and prohibits opposing political parties. Okay? So, totalitarian. Parang Russia. Parang ko, totalitarian. Uh, North Korea. Parang dictator, totalitarian. No? Parang ganun. So, that's, that's for the political system. Anong implication niya sa study natin international business and trade? We need to understand the political system of the country so that we know how to maneuver our business or our our interest in doing business in that specific country. Ganun lang siya ka-basic. Let's go to the economic system. The economic system, it should be clear that political ideology and economic systems are connected. Ulit natin, no? In countries where individual goals are given primacy over collective goals, we are more likely to find market-based economic systems no? as opposed to collectivism. Ito naman, individual goals are pri pri uh, has the primacy. That's why pag nag implement tayo dyan ng business, halos market-based economic system, no? In countries where collective goals are given preeminence, the state may have taken control over many enterprises. 
markets in such countries are likely to be restricted rather than free. So we can identify three broad types of economic systems, a market economy, human economy, and a mixed economy. So the three broad types, as I said natin, again, the market economy, the common economy, and the mixed economy. In the market economy, all productive activities are privately owned as opposed to being owned by the state. The goods and services that a country produces are not planned by anyone. Production is determined by the interaction of supply and demand and signal to producers through the price system. Market economy. In the common economy, the government plans the goods and services that a country produces, the quantity in which they are produced, and the prices at which they are sold. Consistent with the collectivist ideology, the objective of a command economy is for government to allocate resources for the good of society. So parang yung market economy, ito yung sa individualism. Dito naman sa command economy, uh, collectivism. So, sa Kenya, nangyari itong common economy. And then, nag-shift sila eventually into the market economy. And then, we have now the mixed economy in Kenya. So, what is mixed mix economy? It can, it can be found between market and common economies. Gitna, or you merge them together. In a mixed in a mix economy, certain sectors of the economy are left to private ownership and free market mechanisms, while other sectors have different state ownership and government planning. In the Philippines, uh, in the past, during the dictatorship, I think we have the common economy, and then we got to have the mixed economy today. So being privatized, some hospitals, some power sectors, no? in private. Same as what happened to Kenya as well. When they are being liberated from Britain, they now, uh, part of the, their state-owned firms are being sold to uh, private entities. So, yan yung sa economic system. We want to understand this kasi in our study of international business and trade, is that a common economy? Is that a mixed economy? Kasi pag common economy, baka mahirapan yung mga yung product or service na gusto nyo i-provide sa isang country. Or may, dis may advantage din naman siya. Diba? Ah, we will be the sole provider of uh, ano ba? Ano bang malakas sa Korea? Ang sabi ah, sa mga anyo kasi o oh, um, Samsung sila doon, di ba? So, parang trader ka pag gumamit ka ng hindi Samsung. Or sa car nila, usually sa mga k-dramas na nakita ko, yun day. Di ba? Parang in a way, parang may kumanika namin sila in terms of that specific industries, no? as mentioned. So, para alam ng mga managers, ng mga board of directors, ng owner ng institution, if that country ba, can, can we be wealthy, can we grow our business there or not? Will we have difficulty in that specific country or not? That will be the common questions that we will be encountering when we study the political economy. Okay? Lastly, the legal system. The legal system of a country refers to the rules or laws that regulate behavior along with the processes by which the laws are enforced and through which redress for grievances is obtained. The legal system of a country is of immense importance to international business. A country's laws regulate business practice, define the manner in which business transactions are to be executed, and set down the rights and obligations of those involved in business transactions. Emphasize ko lang ng sample sa Kenya case, case study. That time, wala silang masyadong 
contract into property rights. Yung mga rights nito property. I just own this, but they don't have specific documentation as to the the length and width of their property ownership in terms of land. So nahirapan sila do that time, no? Kasi anyone can just claim it. So yun yung isang implication that a legal system might should be established well. Like the economic system of a country, the legal system is influenced by the prevailing political system, although it is also strongly influenced by historical tradition, which is very, very true. Because people, human beings, as a political being, shape the past or the, the present and the future of a certain country. The government of a country defines the legal framework within which firms do business and often the laws that regulate business reflect the ruler's dominant political ideology. Nangangyari din yan sa Kenya. No? Uh, nagkagulo sila doon dahil na-divide din sila eventually. So what happened there, ang daming tribe, tribal. No? Parang one tribe would want to, 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 to be the president or the leader of, of the country while the other tribes opposed to it and some of the regulations. So, masalimuot. But the dominant political ideology na meron doon, yun talaga yung masusunod. So, that's for the legal system. There are three main types of legal systems. One, the common law. Two, the civil law and the theocratic law. Let's uh, tackle common law. The common law is based on tradition, precedent, and custom. Tradition refers to a country's legal history, precedent to cases that have come before the courts in the past, and custom to the ways in which the laws are applied in specific situations. Judges in a common law system have the power to interpret the law so that it applies to the unique circumstances of an individual case. May historical background siya sa kanila. Let's say, uh, sample na natin yung Kenya, no? since tribal sila, may mga sarili silang mga practices, culture, and then, halimbawa, pwede niyang uh, mag-asawa, ito lang, dito lang, tapos kasala ka sa ganitong katribe, yung mga anong posibleng gagawin, alam mo yun yung the, it has been established along the way with the history and yung mga judge can apply that to unique circumstances, to an individual case, hindi sa pangkalata na pwede niyang i-apply, as opposed to civil law. Civil law is based on a detailed set of laws organized into codes. When law courts interpret civil law, they do so with regard to these codes, specific. Its system tends to be less adversarial than a common law system because the judges rely on detailed legal codes rather than interpreting tradition, precedent, and custom. Kaiba sila, no? Ng common law. Judges in a common law system have the power to interpret the law Whereas judges in a civil law have the power only to apply the law, to distinct uh, application of the law. No? Ano lang yung nakasulat dyan? Ano nakalagay at then? Kung pagpalagay natin yan, ano, uh, ano ba ang basic? Murder is punishable by law. For Murder is punishable by imprisonment. So, kung yun ang nakalagay, civil law, then, that means, lahat ng murder, nakaka-murder, i-imprison. Ganun lang yung applicability. So, ganun yung sa civil law. Theocratic law naman, from the word theos, or God, no? God, ah, uh, is a uh, belief system to a law. Dito, in-emphasize sa book natin, no? Theocratic law is one in which the law is based on religious teachings. Islamic law, 
is the most widely practiced theocratic legal system in the modern world. Although usage of both Hindu and Jewish law persisted into the 20th century, Islamic law is primarily a moral rather than a commercial law and is intended to govern all aspects of life. So, merong mga ganong dapat na i-consider when we want to study international business and trade. How can we apply, how can we apply these principles of political economy, politics, uh, economic, legal system in our study of international business and trade as student of HRM? So, kung nasa recruitment ka, nasa compensation and benefit ka man, nasa, uh, kung ikaw yung hiring manager, ikaw yung nasa uh, grievance and discipline, diba? attendance, safekeeping, etc. Kung ano mang facet ng HR or training, etc. And, and, your, and your company no, na pinagtatrabahoan mo has international presence. And they want to expand even more. Or, Let's say, dun muna sa kung meron kayong mga countries na yun. Kung ikaw yung hiring recruiter dyan or manager dyan, you will ensure that you understand the need of the manpower in that specific country where your business operates, right? Makaka-relate ba siya dyan? Makaka-intindi ba siya ng language dyan? Wala bang language barrier dyan? May mga laws ba dyan na at taliwa sa kanyang paniniwala sa kanyang pananampalataya so you can have this consideration when you go into your hiring process or maintaining your current uh, employees diba? so that's the implication in your study as human resource uh, as as HRM students studying international business and trade. Lalo na ngayon, no? Pag-usapan natin yung globalization, di ba? Anytime, anywhere, you can get a job na hindi lang sa Pilipinas. So, maka, ano ka ba doon? May chance ba makunta ka doon or virtual assistant ka from here working? Then you need to also understand ano yung political thinking nila, uh, ano yung economic nila, ano yung theoretic law nila, or whatsoever. So, ito yung mga implication natin, no, when we study the political economy in the study of international business and trade. I hope that is getting clear no, with you guys. So, lesson summary. All encompassing, all intertwined, all uh, interdependent. We learn that all these three are interdependent, political, economic, and legal systems. We learn that it is important to know the countries in which a firm does its international business and trade. And we know too how to apply that in ourselves, studying uh, as, HRM, as HRM students. So, that's our lecture video too. I hope that helps you give additional insight on our study on international business entry. Thank you.